everybody, so we're here at St. Mary's Church in Reculver and we're here because of that thing. That thing was built in the 900s, extended in the 1100s, fell down and was rebuilt in 1810. The reason, it's big and you can see it from everywhere and you have to put your head in the minds of people when they were building this. In the 900s, everybody lived in mud huts. They were about five feet high. And suddenly, they're building things like this. It was the thing that you could see from absolutely everywhere all of the time. And of course, the heyday of churches and cathedrals were the 1100s. And there's a reason for that. The, Ro the uh, Normans invaded then, and they wanted the statement, we are here, we are here to stay. So they built big things. They built cathedrals. They built castles. And if you walk through a cathedral, it's impossible not to be awed by the sheer scale of them. How could Hand of Man build something like that? Because they were built from stone. They were built from massive stone. And they were built just to inspire awe. And that's the thing about scale. When you build big, you create awe. So if you want big, there's two ways you can go. One is build big. The other is get lots of little things and stick them in a big heap. Just out there behind me out to sea is the Kent Wind Farm and those wind turbines are huge and in themselves of course because they're big they're awe-inspiring. But awe and big isn't necessarily the way to go. Now don't get me wrong, sometimes you need big. If you want to cross a river or a bridge, for instance, you need big. But have a look at this. This is a solar panel. It's not a bad size, but if you look at a solar panel, what you'll see is lots of little squares. These big solar panels are made of lots of little solar panels all joined up. And they get big by joining up lots of little things. Now, when it comes to something like a wind turbine, we tend to think of them as, well, cathedrals of the wind. We think if you want more power, build them bigger. But there are other ways to go, and that is lots of tiny things. That's the main idea behind things like wind walls and wind catchers. Because when something goes wrong with something big, it tends to go wrong catastrophically. When something goes wrong with something small, there tends to be a bit of a mild irritation for a little bit because networks of small things tend to be more robust, they tend to be more efficient, and they tend to be very much cheaper to build and maintain. I wanted to show you this. It's actually a motor from a washing machine. It's a fairly large industrial motor. If we pull that out, there are two things to notice. One is, it's actually just made up of lots of little coils, all joined together wire to wire. There are no control electronics in this motor. It controls itself by its own arrangement. Just by connecting the ends of the wires together in the right order, we don't need any control over that at all. And the same was true of the solar cell. The solar cell had no control electronics. It was just cells wired to each other. There's this idea that if you have lots of things, you're going to need lots of control. Turns out, you don't. If you have lots of things and you just join them up properly, no control over them is needed at all. You just join the wires end to end, which is pretty easy to work out. If you have a couple of little wind turbines and you join them together and you don't get more power out of it, you join the wrong ends together. Just swap the ends over and you'll see more power come out because you've connected the wires properly, you don't need as much control over these things as people seem to think you need. Of course, it is a little bit different with wind turbines because they're basically motors in reverse. But a diode in line is going to take care all of all of that and you are going to end up with a pretty simple system that will look after itself. I mean, you still have the option of putting lots and lots of control in there if you want. After all, I have heard the idea that the pig gets fatter the more often you weigh it. Even so, these systems are much simpler than we at first appreciate, as you've seen in terms of the solar cell and in terms of the motor. And why not in terms of the wind? And why not? Because there is no reason why not. So when thinking about wind turbines, it turns out we've really got three choices. You can go big, for shock, awe and wonder. 
Or you can go small for robust, reliable and easy to maintain. Or you can just throw your hands in the air and go home. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.